The transistor had an impact no one could foresee. Relayed by the Telestar communications satellite. Our firewall held. Please enter your password. What's so special about Napoleon Dynamite? For AT&T Labs researchers in the race for the Netflix prize, that was a million dollar math problem. Basically, everything you do on the Netflix website and all of the actions that you take as a Netflix customer um, can be reduced to some form of data. That data is used to create a mathematical model or algorithm to help Netflix predict which movies you might enjoy watching. The more data the web-based DVD rental company gathers on you, the closer its algorithm gets to predicting your movie preferences. Not just that you like Annie Hall, but that you like Woody Allen movies that are made in the 70s, but not the ones that were made in the 80s. The system relies on collaborative filtering, plugging user information about a particular product into a mathematical equation. That equation then spits out recommendations for other products that user might enjoy. In 2006, the web-based DVD rental company offered a million dollars to the first person or group that could take its customer data and create a model that would show a 10% improvement over Cinematch, Netflix's current system. AT&T Labs researchers Chris Walensky and Robert Bell were among the thousands to accept that challenge. Together with former AT&T colleague Yehuda Koren, they formed Team Core Bell, later known as Bell Core. We are experts in dealing with large data sets and, and building models. And we've been working for 15 years doing analysis of um, AT&T's data sets, which are some of the largest in the world. Doing things like um, building fraud detection algorithms, looking for anomalies in the network. Armed with a massive data set of more than 100 million ratings on nearly 18,000 movies from over 480,000 anonymous Netflix users, Team Belcore dives in. First, they analyze the data set. How many people are there that rated? How many movies? Did people rate movies more than once? It turns out that there was just one rating per user, which was uh, nice for us. Until you get that. Next, they search for patterns in the data and begin crafting algorithm-based models. So we kind of took all of the modeling expertise that we had and you try everything. There's no, uh, there were kind of no rules as to what you could try. So we tried a whole bunch of different techniques. Participants can submit results as often as once a day. Model accuracy is tested against the last few ratings for each user. Current standings are posted on an online leaderboard. At first, it seems the contest will end quickly. I think it was in the first six weeks of the competition, um, the best teams got halfway, 5%. Um, of the 10% needed to win a million dollars. Much of that early gain comes from applying a technique called Singular Value Decomposition, or SVD, a method that helps organize vast data sets for analysis. What SVD does is it characterizes each movie and each user by a vector, in here, in this case, in two-dimensional space. Suppose the two-dimensional space is sort of horizontally what I refer to as the chick flick versus macho movie dimension and vertically sort of a serious versus escapist dimension. And so up in the upper left, maybe we'd have a movie like The Color Purple, sort of chick, serious chick flick movie uh, down here in the opposite direction, uh, Dumb and Dumber. The idea to use SVD comes from an unlikely source, another Netflix Prize contestant who tries it and then openly shares its value. A competitor whose team name was uh, Simon Funk. Um, posted a blog entry describing what he had done and not only describing what he had done but giving enough details so that anybody could code it up. Funk even titles his blog entry, Try This at Home. Those who take Funk's advice benefit with early gains, but by the end of the first year, it's Belcor that reaps the reward, a $50,000 progress prize for an 8.43% improvement over Cinematch the best performance so far. One year later, the team lands a second $50,000 progress prize, but progress has slowed dramatically. Now logging a 9.44% improvement over Cinematch, Belcor is no longer on its own. To eke out the year's improvement, the team has joined forces with another competitor. 
became quite clear that applying many different models and averaging them together was the best way to get uh, the most accurate results. It became obvious to us that to reach the 10% barrier, it would take collaboration with external teams to get there. As competitors move closer to the 10% bar, modeling becomes more complicated. Some models are able to capture incremental gains by accounting for nuances like which day of the week users rated their movies or how much time had passed between watching a movie and rating it. Still, there's one problem no model has solved, the problem with Napoleon Dynamite. There are some movies that have very polarizing ratings. Controversial movies like Fahrenheit 9-11 or Passion of the Christ have very high variance. Uh, they get a lot of ratings of one star or five stars. And one of those movies was Napoleon Dynamite. It turned out to be a movie that people either really loved or hated. There were a lot of ratings of ones and fives. And for that particular movie, um, it was really hard to figure out, based on other movies that people like, whether they would rate it a one or a five. And it was the movie that had the single highest error rate in our models. We struggled with that for a while. We still are struggling with it. Despite that struggle, on September 21st, 2009, Belcor claims victory with a 10.06% improvement over Netflix's recommendation engine. Now a combination of three teams calling themselves Belcor's Pragmatic Chaos, the group's grand prize winning model gets its answer by taking the average of 800 different algorithms, enough to fill a 150 page book. And I don't think when we started anybody expected that that would be the way to win the competition. Bob and Chris are now applying the lessons they learned during the Netflix competition to their own research on projects like this one for AT&T's U-verse. And that makes their boss very happy. It's allowed us to get a head start on some of the things that we ended up doing. So we learned a lot about teaming, we learned a lot about technology, which will be used within AT&T and, and outside. And it was fun. And we won. <laughs> the great thing about winning was that at and share of the prize money is all going to support four worthy organizations that help promote a science education for children. And there, there are already organizations that people in, in at and research have connections with that have volunteered their own time and efforts to supporting these organizations. We felt it was a nice connection to our organization and a nice way to be able to use this prize to benefit students and to support technology education. So would they do it all again? look pretty good because there are a lot of cases. They might get their chance. Netflix has announced Netflix Prize 2, the sequel. We don't have details at this point, but that could be a very interesting competition. 